Are we going? Are we recording? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> is this great on? content. Is this on? <laughs> excuse me. Are we about to start? Yeah. Um, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> quiet, please. We're about quiet, to start. Quiet, please. <laughs> it's like you there at the back. <laughs> 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 I expect you off in your voice. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Chip Lunch Podcast. I'm very excited because we have a lot of new things going on. First thing is we've got a return guest in Gemma. Welcome. Yes, I'm back. Yes. I was good enough to come back. You had so, such a great um, time. Oh, I did have a great time. <laughs> I was your replacement, so it's, it's interesting to actually be sitting here next to you. Yes, um, to see how interesting we make it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yes, thank you for coming. You're coming on as a co host today. Oh, I feel honored. I feel honored. Uh, the other two new thing is that we have a new guest, Katie. Yes, we do. How are you, Katie? I'm good. How are you? It's awesome to have you along. Thank you for coming along. Thank you. Now, um, and also, we're sitting in the new set. Yeah. Which is really exciting. So, so we're much calling. New. Yeah, at Sora Volvo Church, we're calling this the third space. <laughs> okay. No, third space? Yeah, third space. That's right. Yeah. Because uh, one of the things that we talk about at, uh, at Soul Revival Church is. A part of our shock absorber, um, uh, what's the right word for that? Pod- uh, podcast? Well, it's a podcast, <laughs> but it's also um, the way like we like to describe how we do church. Model. Model, yeah, Model. Model. yeah that, I think that's good, is that um, some of it is based on Oldenburg's third place theory, but this is the digital third place, so we're calling it the third space. Cool. That's, that's what they've started calling it, but anyway. That- it's a, so much. Did you say no? I said, look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not allowed. No. Nope. So much new. No. No. <laughs> Start of something new, out with the old, in with the new. Oh, that's right. That. That's why we got rid of the other two boys. <laughs> <laughs> They've been we dropped. Are the permanent They've replacements. Been dropped. <laughs> yes, keep me the good one, and then we'll we'll move yeah. on to uh, having uh, two females on. That's another new thing. Two women. Yes, on. yes. Okay. we outnumber you. Oh you guys my are goodness. friends because we don't usually have friends on the podcast. Yeah, look, it could get a bit rowdy. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. That would be great. Um, so first of all, because Katie, because this is your first time on Gemma, mm-hmm. you've already contributed an answer to yes. this question. Yes. Katie, how do you like to have your chips? Oh, see, I'm not, I don't have a set way. That's okay. What? So if we were going to go, <laughs> what? How because, dare you? Because, what, what sorry. Are, what, um, <laughs> if we were going to get them right now, what would you get them? Probably plain salt with some tomato <laughs> sauce. No. Yeah, see, yep. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Yep. We are Cody, on the same line. Yeah. Look how offended Gemma is. I'm because really offended. Before, I didn't know that but about But before you. I was gluten-free, there was oh. this one place, Menai Deli, shout out Menai Deli, where they had the crinkle chips. They were amazing. Oh, and like you would get cut. like the crinkle cut mm. chips and you would get gravy with them. And what salt would you get? N- normal salt because what? you don't want to overpower the gravy. The gravy's just what? so good uh, with the oh crinkle my salt. Oh, I don't like gravy on chips though. But now I get tomato <laughs> sauce soggy. and I don't think... <laughs> yeah, soggy and no, salty. No, but I don't think I'll go back. I don't think I'll go back to the gravy. Because right. the tomato sauce with the hits crinkle the cut chips with the, with the salt hits the spot. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I haven't, I haven't had crinkle cut chips mm. for quite a while. Mm. Menai Deli, Menai Deli. Tomato sauce and, and plain salt. Uh, mm. We have, we have the same mind. Mm-hmm. I like that. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Good. This is good. See, <laughs> we were talking about that. If we get to twenty episodes, we're going to see what is the most popular salt. Oh. I think that's where we're getting. And I'm coming back. I, that chicken salt was in an early lead, but I'm bringing it back. It's like a. Like a thoroughbred coming yeah. back to actually finish, you know, finish in the right way. So, but if there is a chicken salt and normal salt, I will just have chips. Like, if there's the two options, I will go for as many chips as I can. Okay, I thought you were saying I'll have Wait, no salt. I was like, no salt, salt that's no, 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 no. Like, I won't <laughs> care. <laughs> I won't care. I will just have the chips. Right. So you're indifferent, really. Yeah, but my preferred method is. <laughs> well, I just had it in there. Awesome yeah, <laughs> Too bad. Right, oh. so, okay, so we've got the answer to that. Second question, Katie, mm-hmm. which is always one of my favourite questions that we ask anyone who comes on, is how did you become a Christian? Yeah, so um, I used to think that my story about becoming a Christian was really boring and I was like, oh, it's just the ordinary story, like not all that special because I was actually really blessed to have grown up in a Christian family um, and I'm really close with my mum and dad and my sister. Um, and so over time I thought I would always go, oh, you know, I just grew up in a Christian family. But the older I got and the more I talked with people, um, I discovered that each story is so unique and different and that no story is ordinary. Every story is extraordinary because it's a story of how Jesus changes everything. 
And um, yeah, so I grew up in a Christian family. Um, my mum and dad were super involved in our church, which I grew up in. Um, and when I was five, which is why I have such a passion for children's ministry, is because I actually became a Christian through children's ministry and my family helping me as being supported with the children's ministry. But at five or four, I prayed with my children's minister um, to become a Christian and I really, really wanted to. Like I asked mum a little while ago, I was like, did I actually want to or did I just want to say I was a Christian? And she was like, no, you really, really wanted to. You were like super passionate and convinced that you wanted to pray with particularly the children's minister and you wanted to do it. And I was like, oh, that's that's actually really cool that I made that choice for myself. But then there's also been aspects of my life where I've come and been like re-established that faith because I've always struggled with trying to establish my own faith that's separate from my parents. So in year seven, I um, decided at my first ever youth camp that this, this I was a Christian, but I wanted to be an all-in Christian, not just a weekend Christian, not just a Sunday Christian. I wanted to be someone who lives with Jesus in every aspect of their life. Um, and so, yeah, I started serving and I started doing children's ministry in year seven because I really wanted to help other kids come to know Jesus like I had through children's ministry. Um, and then in year nine or year 10, um, mum and dad sat me down and they talked to me about confirmation, which is something that Anglicans do if you're baptised as a baby. Um, you kind of make the decision to confirm your faith. Uh, and they sat me down and they said, Katie, we want you to do this because you want to do this. We don't want you to do it if you don't want to do it. So we want you to think about it really, really hard. And so I took that to heart and I thought really in, the le in length and with prayer if I wanted to be confirmed or not because I was like, this is a commitment. I'm not going back. If I stand up in front of everyone, I'm going to commit my life to Jesus for the rest of my life. And so I was like, yep, I'm all in. I really want to do that. And so I committed myself, like I'd made a commitment um, in front of the whole church um, and I did all the courses, which was really awesome and helped me understand more because I also went to a Christian school. So I had that base knowledge and, um, but I didn't have a lot of deep knowledge. So over the time I've, tried to dig a bit deeper and go beyond those Sunday school answers. Um, and then um, probably the biggest step of faith was in year 12. I was feeling a bit grey in my faith and I knew that in year 12 I, have see, I had seen so many people um, before me come at a bit of a fork in the road of um, going to church and sticking with your faith or just letting it fade away, especially with Christian school kids. Um, I've noticed that there are a big diversion of followers and and people who aren't followers anymore. And that kind of happened in year 12. And so at the start of year 12, I made that decision that I was going to make sure that I will do everything possible to n never be slack on going to Bible study, going to youth group, serving, um, and just loving and living for Jesus. And so I went to LIT and I heard an awesome preacher and for the first time in about a year I felt on fire again because um, I was really vanilla and I didn't want to be vanilla at all um, especially going into year 12 because I knew it was such an influential year and that preacher was actually Stu and um, I didn't know at the time but Gemma and I had decided that we were going to go visit our favourite teacher's church um, shout out to Lauren Derrimble <laughs> and uh, we decided to go the day after we got back from LIT and I didn't know who the preacher was and so the preacher was Stu and um, I was like, uh, he goes, oh, I go to, uh, I'm the senior minister at Soul Revival Church and I, and I went to Gemma late. I was like, Gem, that's the church we're going to on the weekend, right? And she was like, yeah. And I was like reignited with the passion for Jesus and that week was epic and changed my whole life because after that we went to the church and I just felt like I was coming home and um, the way that we do church was something I was super passionate about and was like looked at others and saw that they were passionate too and I was really excited by it and it made me want to want to delve deeper into God's word and to live for Jesus and so I came back another week and then I said to mum mum how sad would you be if I was to move from our family church and she was like I'm gonna have a pray about it and I'll let you know and 
And so I was praying hard during that time because I was like, if I do this, I'm not just going to be an Anderson girl. I'm not going to be Jen and Tim's daughter. I'm not going to be um, Courtney's sister. I'm going to be Katie. I'm going to be a Christian and the person who loves, serves and puts Jesus first in everything I am. I want to be that my identity is someone who loves Jesus and not just tapped onto my parents' faith. And so my mum came back to me and she goes, you know what, Katie, I'm super at peace with that decision and if you want to do that decision for your faith we are 100% supportive of it and it was the best decision I've ever made because that fire and fervor for knowing Jesus more and serving him I just want to keep growing and so yeah that's kind of a little bit of my journey and then like when I've had some really tough times um, where I could have not um, chose Nat Fork in the Road chose Jesus. I just came back to the promises that God is our strength and He's our refuge and He's always there for us. And I see God answering my prayers through my life when I look back, and that He is always there and He's He has promises that He keeps. And so when I do struggle with things in life, with like whether that's my health or my mental health or a few other things, I just I see how. God's providence and God's provision over my life and I choose him every time and know that he loves me and will never forsake me even though I sometimes feel like I'm lonely um so I've tried to I've kind of hold on and tried to never let go if that makes sense but I'd fail a lot (laughs) <laughs> but yeah. we all do yeah right yeah yep. 100% there's also the reason you came to Sorrel Church because your boyfriend was here no no we didn't actually start no no no, no. look at Ethan up. look at Ethan <laughs> <laughs> no we didn't start dating till after I actually moved so we got cool. to, we met each other that was a joke by the way oh yeah <laughs> oh it's, but like, it's a touchy subject Joel Is because it? lots of people thought <laughs> yeah, that you. <laughs> well some people said when I came here it was coming for a boyfriend even though I've been dating Jake for like two years and he went here. So there was a lot of uh, conspiracies. Excellent. Can't about wait it, to hear that them. this was the boy church and we were just like trying to, you know. Pick up. Pick up. No, you know? Ethan wasn't going to. Ethan said to me later that he wouldn't have dated me if I didn't move churches. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense because I don't see Ethan leave. Ethan, of course, is the another co host that yeah. we have on the Chip Lunch podcast. What I find interesting though is that Ethan became a Christian very early in his um, life and so did you. I yeah. thought that was interesting because now you're obviously getting married yeah. in a few months' time. So yeah. that's that's pretty cool. Um, I found it interesting, like it was a really cool story that you told us. So, And I think you're right, everyone has a unique story and I think that's really a really special thing. Everyone goes, oh, my story is not as exciting as this person. <laughs> like the people that's like, I had drugs, I was on drugs yeah. and all this and then Jesus appeared to me and we, I mm. became a Christian. But I don't think that's, I think you're right. I think it's that everyone has a unique yeah. story. Um, a couple of things I picked up was that you had like different moments of your um, walk with Jesus, like up until about year 12. What were the kind of like turning points in, on your faith around that time? And were there any particular things that you want to share about that? Because mm-hmm. that's what we talk about on the Chief Launch yeah. podcast is how do we, what was our experience as a Christian as we grew up? Mm. Um, yeah. So kindergarten, definitely, or when I was four, it was definitely children's ministry and the impact that that had on my life mm. and my family bringing me up in the faith. Mm. Um, and the other thing with my story is that I feel like I thought it was boring because my mum had had a really hard time growing up and became a Christian and had one of those extraordinary stories, right. but they're not actually extraordinary. She was like, I wish I had the story that you had. Yeah. Mm. And so I think after I heard that realization, I was like, wow. And so that also impacted me just remember like with how blessed I feel to have grown up in a Christian family. Mm. Um, and then year seven and year 10 and year 12 all revolved around my mental health. So that's something that I have struggled with and um, yep. being something that I continue to work on. Um, but I think when I was at my lowest of times around those years, um, I chose to, cho- to turn to Jesus and to seek refuge in him and my role models and seek their guidance and my other Christian mates and get them to pray for me. So, yeah, I think mental health and the idea of trying to be perfect um, was something that growing up I really, really struggled with because I used to have the perspective of I'm going to try and be a good person to get to heaven, not it's 
not the reaction of getting to go to heaven. And that's something that I really, really struggled with. I, because I was a goody two shoes, I was a bit perfectionistic. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, I really struggled with trying to know that, no, it's, you can't do anything. It's God's grace. Yeah. Mm. And that's something that I think f- when I flipped that switch and I realized I literally can't do anything, but I can show others that, that Jesus loves them through mm. what I do. What was the point that made you think of that though? Like, so you, you're yeah, saying I that don't like know. The, the, the switch that flicked over. It just happened. I don't, I think it was possibly either a talk or chats with my mum because mm. she saw I had that perfectionistic trait in me and would talk to me and go Katie like there's nothing you can do you will you will always sin you won't go to heaven unless you believe in Jesus and God's grace is amazing and this is what it's all about and so I think that's something that mum used to talk to me lots about so I don't think there's a certain point where I flipped a switch I think yeah, it's hard to know when because it's something I've always struggled with and it's something that my parents have been aware of something that I've always struggled with. So they've mm-hmm. kind of tried to guide me through that. Yeah, of course. There's, there's a lot of factors in that. Mm. I was like, um, you because you guys went to the same school. You were friends yeah. at school, right? Yeah, we did. Both went to a, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can't you tell, guys? Um, besties. <laughs> besties for the resties. <laughs> um, I'd like to like just hear about your shared experiences that into sort of obviously both <coughs> both um, friends as girls and then also like growing up in a Christian school mm. like, and how that that kind of um, impacted your faith journey. Do you want to go first, Gemma? Just yeah. yeah. Why don't you comment on Katie as a friend? Oh. Um, <laughs> Let me analyze my <laughs> jokes, jokes. Well, I've got um, my list. <laughs> well, it's it's really interesting. Like <laughs> five yeah. star rating. Five star rating. <laughs> Uber. No. <Yeah. laughs> um, it's really interesting talking about this because Katie and I like we've been friends for a long time but I think in year 11 and 12 was when that friendship was like quite yeah. solidified mm-hmm. um and that was kind of when Katie was going through some pretty hectic stuff like with your health mm. and um through school and everything and I think um watching you kind of grow through that and I think kind of what we we're saying before um about when things kind of uh, escalate or when you kind of feel like you're had to step back from wanting to, you know, have things perfectly or whatever. I think it's actually when things became more out of control for you and mm. I feel like um, it it was really interesting being a close friend of yours in that situation and trying to navigate how I can support you and love you. Mm. And there's been seasons when it's been the opposite way around and I've been in a season where it's been out of control and, mm. like, Katie's been able to, like, love and support me. But I think... Um, we were kind of in a unique position at school where um, we were both at a Christian school, but you say it's a Christian school, but like probably only maybe like towards the end, it's like maybe 20% of your grade are actual Christians. Christians. Mm. It drops like flies and it drops really quickly. Like after year 10, it's kind of just like peters off a bit. Yeah. Um, And I think it was really interesting trying to navigate like doing senior school Mm. and wanting to be, do really well and, um, and parties and like go to parties and have all the things that you have in senior school but also like navigate um, mm. your faith in yeah. such like I feel like if you don't have anything major going on in your life I feel like senior school is kind of when start things start to kind of kick off mm. for a lot of my friends anyway mm. um, where you're facing the HSC and it's like you can step away from school and go oh that wasn't a big deal but when you're in it yeah. it's huge yeah. it feels like this mountain that yeah you have to overcome. Yeah, my anxiety was peaking. Oh, 100%. And sitting in exams, like, that is just a huge thing. And, like, I just think about this year's year 12 and how crazy Mm. it would be for them. But it's just, like, generally the HSC and doing that is not a fun ordeal at all. Um, So I think trying to balance faith and study is, like, a huge thing. And I think for Katie, like... You are way more studious than I am. Like I was, I was in support maths. Everyone, uh, <laughs> Gemma, <laughs> not not you were, you were the best. Oh. You just didn't have the confidence. No, I do, I wasn't very studious. Anyway, <laughs> you like you're quite you know studious and onto it. And I think um, it's interesting watching your different peers kind of navigate. Mm. I feel like everyone kind of had this yeah. um, a level of anxiety about finishing school and what that would bring and for some people it was like I need to study and I need to be perfect and I need to have this and for others it was like I'm too overwhelmed to 
want to even face this. And mm. I think through that, navigating your faith is a huge thing because yeah. you want to stay on top of your faith. And we both wanted to keep doing ministry and keep serving and um, doing church and all of those things. But it is really hard to kind of navigate that. And I mm. guess um, a big part of our friendship kind of in later school, like when it was quite close and mm. we were quite good friends, mm. that was a really interesting time for us kind of navigating Yep. that experience together and um as katie kind of said at the start of year 12 she moved to solis um and i had a little diff a little bit of a different experience i kind of had come before we went to lit um because LIT is a youth work yeah, yeah it's like a youth works um leadership camp yep. that you kind of do like you know if, if you want to have if you're a, a leader yeah or yeah. if you want to like um partake in like ministries yeah. at your church um and i'd actually come here a few times because um jake came here and I was Your like boyfriend. oh fiance, fiance I'm sorry <laughs> boy, boy, boyfriend at the time and then fiance <laughs> oh, wow. okay. um yeah so I came here just to visit his, his church and I was like yeah whatever like I'll come here like just to do my part and you come to my church like mm. see what I do kind of thing <laughs> um and I was at like a bit of a crossroads in year 12 trying to figure out where I wanted to be and it actually took me a lot longer to decide if I was going to come to this church or not and I think going through that with Katie was really interesting because we had this shared experience of moving because we were both at the same previous church as well I forgot to mention that so we had a lot to do with each other um we were at this church and Katie had really decided to move and I was kind of like dipping my toes in both and navigating that was really tricky on top of just year general 12. year 12 stuff yeah. so I feel like I don't know I think that was kind of when we experienced most of our mm. like faith and school and friendship journey we grew together. together yeah I think it was like a very um like it's a really nice time for our friendship but yeah. also like something that's really brought us to where we are 100 mm. today but I think before that being a Christian in high school and kind of doing that together and different friend groups like that was a whole other like mm. kettle of fish which yeah feel like I've been talking for a long time. Let's go. So. Well, that's yeah. it. Like, yeah, Katie, you well, can now. Funny, <laughs> no, I was so agreeing 100% with what you're saying. There's three sides to a story, right? There's like, you can, we can make a Gemma side, Katie side, and the truth. What about so, your side? <laughs> <laughs> you can just guess no. what happened. Yes. So that would be nice. Well, I'll, 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 Joel McMaster, yeah, he's 2017 my, graduate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's way too late for me because um, I'm so old. Um, the... Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, just let's see your your side of it and yeah. I'll just comment on it at the end. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we're in court just quietly. Like, all right, the defendant, like the yeah, that's person. That's like, well, that's the like. thing is, I agree 100% with what Gemma was saying. I think, yeah, year 11 and 12 is something that is so concentrated on one thing that it bonds you. Mm, it <laughs> does. Um, and I think as well, Gemma was really passionate about Jesus and serving um, ministry and I think that's kind of what joined us together and that experience of transitioning and settling into a new church mm. um, together was also really really good experience for us together as friends um, but yeah like with parties I would go and I would know that there are other people with who are like-minded and I will just hang out with Gemma and a few of our other friends who are similar to us and um, while everyone else is getting a little bit bit loose bit loose <laughs> um we would just have the best time and dance mm. until we dropped and ate cake and you know oh yeah all those so other good, so girly uh, <laughs> although cool. katie loved the part in the party where the cake oh, yeah. came out that you was like we used to call her cakey cakey that was my nickname in high school cakey <laughs> and now i'm gluten-free <laughs> sounds like a high school movie Sugar free and dairy, <laughs> oh, and dairy cool. free yes, look. It's but look, yeah. you guys, you guys do you do you? That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I was to insult us, Joel. I was called Katie. I'll do that later. No, but when they, but Gemma knew it was Gemma, the first one who kind of knew how sick I was because yeah. I had I have chronic fatigue and I got chronic fatigue in year twelve because of all that pressure I put on myself, mm. um, and like the stress and other things probably contributed to it. And it was like the first party we had it's, that she didn't. Eat cake. Eat cake. And I was like, bro, something She's is not wrong okay. with her. <laughs> She's not okay. <laughs> I was like, something is so off. And so, and so like, Gemma was the first one to be like, yeah, Jen, she's not okay. Mm. And mum's like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Are you calling to question my parenting? <laughs> not, a, not a doctor, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have cake at the last party. Something wrong. <laughs> my diagnosis is uh, no cake excitement here. Yeah. So I'm a bit concerned. Yep. Yeah. So like, we kind of have always looked out for each other in that 
in that way and um, like I think having those core friendships who are on the same page as you faith wise mm. is was such a blessing because I've talked with other people who had had that mm. and the fact that we could build each other up and be like what's going on what can we pray for you like pray for you about even now like Jem um Jem myself and our other friend we share prayer points often um and we still catch up the three of us and hang out and um our friend goes to a different church than us but because we shared that experience and that life together we still build each other up as Christians and sisters Mm. in Christ and yeah that's something that I'm very thankful for um through going through that tough time I think that because we went through it at the same time and we understood the same trials and the same ways and we may have had different approaches to studying um and all that kind of stuff but we had the same pressures Mm. um and yeah so I think that helped especially spurring each other on and encouraging each other to to never give up on your Mm. faith because I think it could have been very easy for us to all give up but the fact that we had to keep we kept each other accountable through that was what I think kept us all going that's really cool because that's something we've talked about um quite regularly on the podcast is that those of us that became Christians in high school or even before high school was that we we almost regret that we didn't take our faith more seriously mm. like growing up and obviously we had to go through our own journey and God was teaching us um, particular things in through that but I mean even in my experience I wish I had really stood out more as a Christian and like actually cared about people mm. and but I was spent you get caught up so much in the um, the kind of status anxiety and the mm. whole thing about school, about like the hierarchy or yeah. even like just paying people out and all that kind of thing that yeah. it just, um, that would take precedence. Yeah. And sometimes you, you, you're not allowing God to lead you in that, in mm. those circumstances. So that, that's one thing that we've, um, we've learned a number of times on this, doing this podcast yeah. is that mm. like, and as an encouragement to younger people that are listening to it, like, we really encourage you to take your faith seriously because I think you won't regret it later yeah. if that's that's a cool thing to say. And, yeah, and the Christians you have in your life now, like look at them, though your youth group friends, you may not have them at school, but the mm. good thing, the special thing about I think our friendship was it was at church as well with our other friends, the three of yeah. us were together and at school. So we kind of got to transfer mm, that, that would through. Be cool. But if you don't have that, there are people here or you can talk to me or talk to Gemma or she'll talk to you, Joel, about that and share with your experience. And if you're going through a tough time, like mm. we would love to help you through that. Like mm. that's part of mm. uh, what I see is my role as a youth leader to be your friend. Mm. And so I know how lucky I was to have friends like Gemma and through year 11 and 12. And for people who don't have that, I want to help be that person for you as well, I think. I think so really quickly another um great thing um with the accountability stuff is I think Katie and I have built quite a good like bank account Mm. with each other because we also um started doing ministry like quite young so in year seven we were both kind of doing kids ministry not in the same kind of like Katie was more with the little kids and I was with the older kids but I think um, one of the things I've really reflected on recently is how when you do ministry with people your relationship and your ability to be accountable with them Mm -hmm. is actually like something really special and really um, important in kind of going about your faith journey and I think um, yeah just like having that Mm. and being able to check in on each other through your like shared experience of doing ministry and kind of um I guess checking out on how you're kind of going, doing that ministry too is a really good way um, to kind of, yeah, see how everyone's going with their faith. Well, and to that point, that's something that we try and we always wanted to be doing at Sorrow Old Church is that obviously if like we talk about, we talked about um, leading youth a couple of episodes ago, but also that we, we want to make sure that our leaders are friends with each other and keeping each other mm. accountable mm-hmm. so they can be better friends in appropriate ways with the ch- the kids or the children, but also that then they're going to be more... Um, what's the right word, like ministering to those kids better as well because yeah. you're being kept accountable by your friends. So yeah. I think that's a really, really important thing to say. I'd, I'd really like both of you guys though because you were friends at school. What's it like – I mean, it's probably different in a Christian school too, but what's it like growing up as a woman, as a Christian, when you're in that kind of 
um, maybe year seven to year twelve mm. period because I think it is it's quite different for guys and girls. Yeah. Mm. And we kind of touched on it in that episode that we had with Quinn a little bit, but I just lo- would love to hear your perspective on that before we move on to anything yeah. else. Because, oh. I mean, we're talking about high school, right? So. Yeah. yeah. Girls girls can be brutal. Brutal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it can be rough. I've observed that. It can be very rough. <laughs> mm. Like one, some of the the girls in, in like Christian school – also, you, it doesn't avoid of bullying yeah. for your faith either. Like I was called the Virgin Mary, like at school. A lot. Very inventive. Like you laugh, but it was. But uh, it was true. Like I was called the Virgin it. Mary. It's just funny. Yeah. And what I did was I was like, yeah, okay. And so I, the girl who called me that, who I think started it, I would help her with her maths. And and so at the end, apparently at a party, she was super smashed, and she said to one of my other friends, she was like. I don't get it. Like I, I was so mean to Katie, and she still helped me with my maths. <laughs> and with my maths. <laughs> with my maths. Like, what? <laughs> and I was like, that was so hard to do because mm. I would come home and sob, mm. um, and be really sad <laughs> mm. about it because it was awful to be called that. But at the same time, I was like, okay, so I can look at it as it's either awful or she's seeing that I'm trying to be like Jesus. <laughs> Are you a virgin? Were you called a Virgin Mary because you were a goody goody? Is yeah. that okay? <laughs> yeah, goody goody and Christian. Christian. In a Christian school, yeah. how dare yeah. she? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like you, you get uh, you yeah. get slayed like, a little bit. Is that also because but some children at a Christian school have been sent there by their parents, yeah. and oh, then fully. it's kind of like yeah, their resentful. So lack. some people yeah. think that you in the Christian school you have the Christian school, the Christian kids, the kids with the Christian parents, and then you have the hardcore super against Christianity, hates everything Christian and will go out of their way to make fun of Christianity, the people who are the hardcore Christians yeah, right. and everything. So whilst public school would be super hard to be a Christian, I I applaud people who have stood out. In fact, mm. like every time I hear stories about how much Ethan stood out and was a Christian and his faith, I'm so proud of him. But in the Christian school avenue, it's hard because you're accepted as a Christian, but then you have washy Christians and, and then levels. you have different levels yeah. and then you have the really mean people who yeah. hate yeah, Christians. Who are just there because it's... They a, have to. Essentially, a like our school. school was like a cheaper private school. Yeah. So it attracted a lot of people because of the <laughs> independent school kind of know, benefits yeah. that yeah, it had. Benefits, yeah. um, but also, yeah. like, you know, you don't have to be a Christian to go there yeah. or your parents... The parents don't even have to be a Christian to go there. Like mm. it's just yeah. um, like any other kind of independent school. Yeah. Um, but like the teachers kind of hold these Christian values and Christian values. implement that in the classroom. But and they were really helpful too, yeah. especially um, with girls things because, you know, gossip is a major yeah. struggle and um, like they don't do it. Girls are sneaky in that they don't do it like guys. Guys this is a very will punch. noisy bird above yeah. us. That's why we're looking funny. We'll, we'll, we'll push through it. Guys, yeah. guys will punch on and everything will be fine, but girls can just hiss really verbal grenades. Yeah. Wow, that's a really interesting way to describe it. Okay, <laughs> they hiss yeah. verbal grenades. And they keep coming. And they too, keep right? coming. Mm. And it can be like a an assault of mm. these jabs. And you yeah. just need to – and it's so hard not to let that mm. affect you mm. and your faith. Mm. Yeah. Because – Every day, every time I got called the Virgin Mary, I was like, do I really want to stand out this much? Like, yeah, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And I'm Mm -hmm. like, no, (laughs) I gotta keep going. Um, But having like Jem and and our other friends. (laughs) I'm so sorry. (laughs) Having (laughs) having Jem and our other, um, and my (laughs) other friends going like supporting me and being like, it's okay. Yeah. We love you for who you are and your faith. And we want to support you in that. That was super awesome. And just specifically girls, it was hard when we were a group of Christian girls who could sometimes gossip and struggle with gossip mm. to be like, we're like, hold up. Yeah. If but people were- make each other yeah, accountable. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. If people were listening in on our conversation, would they see Jesus in that? Yeah. And we would be like, Ugh. And, and I, think, <laughs> I think Katie was very good at- um, she would just walk away. I'd like, to see go you to later. The I need to go to the toilet. I don't have a part of this. Whereas Gemma loved the goss. <laughs> the um, third person at the yeah, look, uh, That Gemma. Look, year seven and eight Gemma, even year nine, probably. That was like the three years of um, Gemma wants to impress everyone and be really funny and be really cool. And, and she was hilarious. About everyone. Super funny. Still yeah, is. Yeah, not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to impress people with my uh, comedic charm and my mm. wit, um, which 
wasn't necessarily the most helpful thing for my faith and kind of holding this like accountability and um, kind of sticking to um, kind of modeling what it is to be a Christian at school. And I think, um, yeah, it's really interesting kind of hearing Katie's experience because I kind of was like cruising along, just being like funny old Gemma, like, haha, like loving the drama, like all of that <laughs> <laughs> during the school week. I love the way you talk about yourself. It's great. Oh, look. I'm not proud of high school Gemma. She was not the best person. Um, but I think in year 11 and 12, I like got a massive like kick in the butt and was like, all right, Gemma, your report card says like talks too much from every teacher. You need to be serious now. Um, so That's I think that was when I kind of shifted into more of this like, okay, like let's be accountable to each other. And mm. I wanted to be on the school leadership team. So I was like, oh, yeah. I better like, you know, scrub, scrub up, up for that. <laughs> um, I think we all had yeah, that we same all kind point. of had a bit of a turning point um and but kind yeah. of all came together to hold each other accountable yeah so I think it's really interesting kind of um reflecting on that because I actually remember like Katie and I like we probably didn't hang out as much as we do now like in those earlier years of high school and I think that was because we had very different priorities mine were not so so swell um <laughs> just wanted to be a bit of a clown um <laughs> but I think yeah I think in year 11 and 12 I kind of copped it a bit and I started to learn like oh actually like being a Christian in this environment does have consequences um I was a bit of a um I don't know how to say this kind of like I was in the leadership team I was in like our Christian lunchtime is the group. leadership team like prefix and yeah stuff? like okay. but there was 12 because yeah, of the 12, 12 disciples yeah <laughs> Okay. No <laughs> <but anyway. laughs> I don't know if that's actually true. Just so you know, I don't actually know if that's I a, like to think it's I true. Think that's just Katie's <laughs> made up fact. <laughs> so so if, please don't if you take were that. Choose to be one of them. Which <laughs> one would you be? Oh. Oh. Well, sometimes they have more than twelve. Like this year, they have fourteen. Anyway. Oh, oh so I don't you, know if there's right, any... you were probably wrong, Katie. But that's okay. Look, but we'll, I, we'll, I think we'll I love that fact. <laughs> yeah, we can we can stick with that. Look, um, I like to bring the Bible in nerdily whenever. It's one of the one of the first things I said to Ethan was there was this bright light shining at me I was like ah oh, I'm like Saul on the road to Damascus <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but I was just talking to myself I just said it just like sealed the deal I just said it out loud and I look up I'm like oh crap I was did not anyone, ready for that were you ready did for anyone, that did, did anyone hear me and then Ethan's Ethan's looking up going <laughs> it's just like it's Ethan as a pastor's kid he's like oh, wow <laughs> she's amazing <laughs> She knows the Bible so well. And a well. light shine from above. <laughs> <laughs> but I regret saying that so much because I said it. In, I didn't mean to say it so loudly. I was just saying it to myself. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my I was goodness! So, I was Ethan's such crying. a dork. It's a great time. Just I was, highly romantic. <laughs> I was such Spicy. a dork. Sorry, continue. Um, so <laughs> anyway, I was kind of talking about how we had a leadership team. And how there were 12 disciples in it. <laughs> um, but basically in high school, like when we were in senior school, I was collecting the badges. You know, when you like get your, you like got your bus monitor, you've got your like crew leader, crew leader, Ca house captain, Pepsi leader. You were house captain, right? I was no like, one knows what these things okay, are. Okay, so Pepsi, a, sorry, sorry. That? Basically, I was a nerd and wanted Pepsi all the badges leader? on my blazer. So crew Pepsi was like Pepsi? Um, this Mentorship. peer support mentor program. Hang on, is it called Pepsi? Like it's Pepsi. sponsored by. <laughs> no, like, no, no. Like P P E P E P E. I don't know. S I. <laughs> That's how you spell Pepsi. Yeah, no, it, it was just two E's. It was, there was no I. Yeah, Pepsi. Just the E's. <laughs> anyway, I'm it's not good at spelling. Don't. Oh, S E. Sorry. Yeah, S E. Yeah. Then okay. Right. Anyway, anyway, that's like a peer support program. Bus monitor was like the people <laughs> on the bus that like make sure <laughs> sit down. <laughs> This is who I became. Literally, if you had the sit bus on the back, you just had to flash it, and I like you would get the back seat. Yeah, you'd see the back seat, and all like the kids, watch. all the young kids, would oh, like run you in just terror. Power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was such a nerd. I just wanted the badge. Really, I didn't really want the responsibility. That came I was a proud okay, library monitor. Else, had a um, have and then I had crew leader, which is like our Christian lunchtime group. You got okay. a badge for that as well, yep. and then leadership team. So I had four badges. I was quite proud of myself. Um, but <laughs> with that, I kind of didn't realise the insults that would <laughs> come with that. Hey, kind there goes of, badge girl. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And also, our uniform had a vest. 
and oh, I, vest I really vest. loved the vest. <laughs> we started the phrase vest, you put, vest yeah, is best. But yeah, well, so that makes because, a lot of sense. But you put the jumper, badges on the vest, didn't you? Or if I wasn't wearing blazer. my blazer, I'd move them onto the <laughs> Vest. Just so everyone would know. Gemma's just late to school every morning because she has to move them from the jacket when just it got hot. With the ruler vest. measuring well, we had the yeah, distance. Yeah, yeah. We had to bring our vest, I mean, our blazer like every day because you kind of meant to like rock up and then like leave in with the, the blazer. blazer. It's kind of a private oh, school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah school you thing. have to wear it. <laughs> yeah. Was that hot? On oh, it was hot. Oh, I was boiling. On hot days. Oh, you yeah. don't have to wear it on hot days, though. Oh, yeah, but you can't just wear it. Like, but I couldn't just wear the vest. Could anyway, you throw it, like, that's, that's a whole hot shot. topic. We don't need to go into that. But basically, <laughs> no, <we do. laughs> there was just some stupid rule that I was like, if it was, like, cool enough that I could just wear the vest and, like, not the you blazer, I wasn't to. allowed to wear just the vest. I had to wear the blazer and the vest. And if I took the blazer off, I also had to take the vest off. So I couldn't just wear the vest. Basically... But Gemma doesn't play by the rules and no, wear the vest. I, would, I actually fought the head of secondary at the time. I was like, excuse me, I would like to wear the vest. I'm going to move the And the, the vest is so ugly. Like, I don't know why. I <laughs> Hang on, because it was iconic. It was, I, I was just kind of taking the piss, I think. Like, we're right. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. We can, we can edit it out if you want. Um, but anyway, I kind of like had all these things and all these leadership things and I kind of didn't think about how that would kind of cost my relationships with people or what people would think of me. I wasn't necessarily like... Your pursuit like, of the badge. Yeah, I wasn't necessarily right like now. the cool, like funny clown. Not that I was ever really cool, but I didn't like... Oh, you were cool. Katie, I don't Dude, think I was, I was quite, cool. I was like <laughs> dorky dork. I'm not the right, you the, the right the, person to yeah. ask. <laughs> but I was Just dork quietly. like dork face and I thought you were cool. Yeah, so you I were the Virgin I kind Mary, of, but yeah. Like, yeah, you were able to <laughs> rest <sorry>. in peace. <laughs> yeah, it, it was not a good time, but I think I kind of realized that those things, yeah, it took away my like ability to kind of be cool anymore because I was like the like teachers like helper, like I was like in the leadership team, like I was doing all this stuff for the school and like trying to be like really on top of it. Mm. Gemma, um, where do I sit on the bus? <laughs> yeah, I was like, sit I'm down. Lost. <laughs> Don't stand up on the bus, please. Stop yelling on the bus. <laughs> Don't throw stuff on the bus. No. Yeah, the Patsy wow. bus was Stop wild. Eating. Yeah, the Patsy bus was wild. Um, but I think, yeah, it, that was like a big flip for me. Um, my friendships kind of changed and my um, relationships with a lot of the cool group changed. I was like, I was not cool anymore. Because you just, because of the badges. Yeah, well. like, and that kind of my choice to kind of pursue things that were like that, and like I also did this the school production, and I also was a Christian, and I was leading at church, like things like that kind of flipped it for me, um, and that was kind of a big time of like kind of figuring out what where my identity was, and was it in any of those things that I was pursuing, mm. or was it what I was pursuing <laughs> in the past, or was it in Jesus? And I think um, for a girl in high school, I feel like this is a applicable to guys as well like I think everyone's trying to figure out where their identity is what yeah. defines mm -hmm. them for sure but I think girls um spend a lot of time talking and going oh I'm mm -hmm. this and I'm this yeah. and like your they're not just running around the field like your appearance and your the way you do things yeah. is just so well okay. like much pa yeah pa parties were for girls a way to because we were in school uniforms to dress cool yeah. And yeah. Like what are you cool. wearing? Have you got a like, new outfit? What are you like, wearing? Are you wearing a new outfit? And like outfit repeaters is a no-no. Like, <laughs> you know, all those type of things. And you have to look Cost cool and, and modesty. Modest is not hottest. And I <laughs> I had, I was very modest. Um, and I, like... You just I, want things that you I liked. Didn't, I, I had things I liked and I just was like, you know what? Stuff it. I'm just going to be me and I'll just, I'll be whatever, and I'll dress the way I want to dress. And I figured that out a little bit later. So for a while, I tried to dress a little bit cool, but still being modest because if you sell my belly button, I'll nearly have a coronary because I'm like, ah, not because of anything, just because I'm that person. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like vanity and like kind of mm. prioritising that kind of does become a thing. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, it's just like a natural thing mm. for girls to compare yeah. who has better this and who... Mm. Like you want to try and look like everyone else. Who wore else. sneaky makeup? Because yeah. you don't wear makeup at school. Mm. Who wore sneaky makeup? Who's got this? Who's got this? Who like, has better skin? Yeah, like just things like that um, could very easily become a priority yeah. for yeah. the girls. Just in our grade anyway. I feel like yeah. this is an ongoing yeah, for problem. Sure. But and with identity as well. Like when I was trying to figure out who I was, I would try and dress a little bit cool. 
um, and try and go with the trends that weren't really me. Like, you didn't find satisfaction. It, I didn't in that. find satisfaction yeah. in it. Yeah. And once I shifted that and was like, I'm going to wear what I want to wear, and it may not be the coolest thing, but it's me. I s- felt a change in myself that I was prouder about who I am and that, yeah, like, because right. I kind of growing up, I'd never found a place I was super comfortable, especially as a girl, um, where face value is something that, especially non Christians, judge the harshest. Um, I tried to blend in as much as possible while still standing out as a Christian. So I was a Christian and everyone knew I was a Christian, but. I tried to behave when not talking about like mm. it was it's hard to explain because I was called the Virgin Mary but I also for a first for a little while not a little while like tried to blend in mm. without so if you were to see me in a crowd I would hope I wouldn't stand out and that I would just look like everyone else and I would just act like everyone else and I would laugh in the same pictures as everyone else and try and say the right thing to be liked by because it's almost like it's the fear of being ostracised. Oh, right? yeah, 100%. I was still ostracised anyway, no matter what, because I was like, I'm not going to say I'm not a Christian. Um, but there was a shift where I was at youth group and some of the cool people were there and I was wearing this new outfit and I was really excited about it because I was like, I look cool. I think I look cool. And I heard one of the cool guys and the cool girl talking and like, and I heard them and they go, what is she trying to do like why is she wearing that like that's awful like I don't like it and the girl was like oh I think she looks really like I think she looks nice but the guy was like no it's so like it's so not her she's not cool enough to wear it and things like that and I was devastated I would be too and after that I was like you know what stuff it I'll start wearing what I want to wear and I'll start behaving how I want to behave and I'll try and be myself but I still had that little bit of crazy (laughs) like the outgoing bubbly like I was you're not crazy you I yourself tr- I tried to craft <coughs> myself to not stand out mm. and then I think especially when I moved here and I saw that everyone was just unique in themselves I was like I think I actually can be and so not only was I myself with a small group of people like Gemma saw who I actually was but in class I would be super totally quiet different, yeah. super different would put my hand up and answer the questions, wouldn't try and be too loud or crack too many jokes or be too funny or like anything like that. I just wanted to blend because mm. I was like, I, I already stand out enough by being a Christian. I just want to blend in with everyone else, which is a weird, I, I, talking about it now, it never was going to work because I was still ostracized for being a Christian. So like yeah. trying to physically not look like, to look like everyone else wouldn't work when, anyway, mm. but that's how I felt. And when I started dressing and acting and being myself and fully open. I just felt freer and freer to be a sister in Christ to encourage others to do that and and foster the kids who I see a little bit of myself in. So like with youth, there's some girls who I see sometimes who or they talk to me about like, Katie, I'm scared about being a Christian or people are teasing me about being a Christian or... Um, I want to look like everyone else. And I'm like to them, you don't have to. You are beautiful the way you are because God made you that way. And people are going to teach you for being a Christian. That's just how it is. That's is. We've been We're told in the Bible that you are going to be teased for a Christian. If you're not being teased for a Christian... No one knows. I, yeah. I, do, are you doing... Yeah. Like, are you doing do right? enough people <laughs> not? And yeah. I'm like, the fact that you're getting teased, I'm going to say I'm actually really encouraged... Because mm-hmm. that means that you are unapologetically standing up for Christ. Yeah. And your identity is in Christ. Christ. And your identity is in Christ. And I'm like, when you're dressing cool, I'm like, dude, just be yourself. Dress what, dress the way you want to dress. Mm-hmm. And because when you get caught up in that world, that world of makeup and vanity and outfits and not dressing modestly, that can be all-encompassing, especially for girls. Because Instagram... It's in your face all the time. Yeah, That's so hard to look at Instagram and not compare yourself to the girls that you see on Instagram and be like, mm. oh, she's skinnier than me. She's prettier than me. Or she has better hair than me. Like mm. I can get caught up in that still. But I think, yeah, the turning point was year 11 and 12. Mm. Again, I was like, it, it is, is what it is. Like yeah. I'm not going to do anything now that will change their opinion of me. Like I need to stop trying to... Mm 
physically blend in personality obviously I didn't because I'm a nerd but physically I was like you know it is what it is and yeah I think that's something I wish I could have told my younger self mm. it's the year 11 and 12 thing's really interesting because I even I went through a uh, turning point in year 11 or 12 and it seems like quite a lot of people do it's kind of mm. like this age where you have to it's almost like a pressure to decide who you're going to be for the mm. rest of your life to yeah, a certain there's degree. A lot of, it's almost like the um, the clock starts ticking. It's yeah. like, all right, you're going to be finished school mm. yeah. at this time yeah. and by then what you are you going to be, be a person. Yeah. What are you going to do? Who are you going to be? Which is just yeah. so false anyway. Mm. Yeah. Because And then I think like what you're saying, I mean, I, I, had, I, was made, I, had, I went to a couple of parties and I didn't enjoy it and I was more going to Soul Revival on a Saturday night when mm. we were back at Gaimere Anglican and – it was just basically came a point where it's like everyone, like a, a group split in half almost, and some of them started going to parties, and the rest of us kept going. Like four or five of us went to Solis, and that's how it ended up happening. Mm-hmm. But you you look back on it now, and it's very similar to what you're saying. It's like, yeah, you're at the end of school, you've got to make a decision what you're going to yeah. do. And it's like, hang on, if I had looked back on it like we're saying, then hopefully we found out. Hopefully, I would have found my identity in Christ earlier, so mm. it would have been that decision would have been a lot easier mm. to make mm. in terms of like I don't know what I'm doing, and it kind of it wasn't like a, a direct like split, but it was just like that was the point where it was kind of like these groups started fading over that way, and we started we stayed at church mm. kind of thing, mm. and that was I just find that yeah. really interesting that that's what we do, and it's sad as well when that happens, mm. where but yeah, at this it was hard because. That happened on mass at our school mm. because it was parents hung, you're 18, parents aren't going to make you go to church. And so they just stopped. And yeah. so looking at people who I thought were my brothers and sisters in Christ just get caught up in that party lifestyle, I was super sad. Mm. And I, and so, yeah, it's like I'm still sad that mm. there are some people who, who could have done or if, like, if, was there something I could have done? Mm. Mm. But I just, sometimes I just need to remember that God is all powerful, all knowing and has his hand over every situation. So he may call some of those people back in an unexpected way. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. Like my, um, my group started paying us out for still going. So they started calling us squares because mm. they were mm. one of the guys' dads called us squares. And then they started mm. calling us squares and they actually put... I was parked. I'd been parked at Solis Road, the the old factory, which we called the venue, and it was um my car was there, and they <laughs> got an A4 piece of paper, drew a square on it, and then did like the big no, that big red no sign through it, like no squares, and put stuck it on my car with right. blue tack, and I was just like, I was pretty devastated. Yeah, by that. yeah, that's super sad. Yeah, it's but it, again, but then I'm glad that I stood up and yeah. in a sense, uh, even though. I wasn't really doing anything. I was just in a, in somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just sitting in somewhere. But yeah. that was making a stand in itself, and mm. it makes me think of the the um, the girls that you're leading. You're talking about Katie. It's like they're still making a stand because they're there at youth group with you, mm. yeah. instead of hundred percent being somewhere. Well, else. that's the, that's that's when they talk to me about those kind of stuff. That's the first thing I say. I'm like, mm. well, first of all, you're, you're here. here, yeah, <laughs> and second 100%. of all. The fact that you're talking to me about that, I'm really encouraged mm. because that shows that you're thinking about it. And that is the first step to really defining your identity yeah. as who you are and who you are in Christ. I think if you start being worried about your faith, that probably means you care a lot about 100%. your faith and it's really important yeah. to you. Yeah. I get really excited when kids are like, oh, I really want to become like, I, I want to be more like Jesus or oh, I'm really sad about my friend not wanting to come to, like anything where they're like, oh, like something about Jesus and something they might be like disappointed or sad about. I'm like, oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. You guys said that in year 12, like there was a real split and they had to make a decision. Mm. Do you think that's partly to do with um, some of them, like you said, that, that it's almost like they've been forced to go to a Christian school and it was like, yeah. oh, now I finally get the decision to be myself. And Yeah. And yeah. Cause yeah. Well, that, what that reminds you of is that, Katie, at the beginning you said when you became a Christian that when you chose to come to Sorrowville Church, or when you asked your parents, you said, it's not, I'm not just this person's daughter, I'm this person's sister. I'm actually making a decision for myself. Mm-hmm. So I see this parallels in that. But why, why did you feel like you needed to almost define yourself as Katie and not as anything else? Yeah. Because you're the youngest in your family, right? I am the youngest. Yeah, I am the youngest. And my dad was on parish council and my mum 
was super, super involved in the children's ministry. At and your old church. A few mm. other things in, at our old church. And Courtney was also super involved in the children's ministry. Courtney, and Courtney's your sister. My sister. sister. Their family yes. like was like one of the core families of the church. Well, we'd been going there since m- mum was pregnant with me. Okay. And so we were there for like 18 years. And mum and dad and Courtney were there. Longer. A bit longer than me. Eventually, they all come here now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think I struggled with the idea of who I was and as an individual. And I've had, we've had many friends who have stayed at our previous church and have solidified themselves as followers in Christ by themselves, even with their parents still there. Mm. I think everyone's journey is different. Um, and that like. Like I see some of the kids here who have grown up here and how they have taken their faith on for themselves. I'm so encouraged and I'm so stoked. But for me, I think it was something where I was passionate about a particular model of ministry and particular model of church. And so I was feeling like a round, like a round peg in us trying to fit into a square hole and it just wasn't working. And I think that was, I was always like that. I would always try and talk with people who are older than me, people who are younger than me. I would sometimes go and hang out with the leaders who are doing um, doing supper like, and help with the food. So I always have wanted to be that old age, old stage church. I was trying to make it something it wasn't, um, but I'd always been that way inclined. And I think that was me realising that it wasn't for me and my parents being really uh, supportive of that and moving to, to a place where I could best serve Jesus in a way where I would be passionate and wanting to further the gospel. So I think everyone is different and it's all about your journey and your faith journey. And that might be that you decide to move. That might be you decide to do a completely different ministry than what your family members have done. They may have all been involved in the kids ministry and you want to do the the youth and and that's a way that you can stand out at the Christian school is hard because you're surrounded by Jesus a lot. And all I feel day, like every day. <laughs> all day, every day, you are either fostered. So I had a great foundational knowledge and I, my knowledge of the Bible really was developed and fostered through that. And I was, I feel lucky that I went to that school, but then you also have the kids who felt like they were forced. So mm. it's a lose, lose. Cause if you went to a public school, you would be like, Oh, I wish I had, that knowledge or like I I don't like you know it can be either way um yeah I think it's different for everyone because like I still have friends who go to our previous church and they love and are froth like frothing and super on fire for Jesus and the ministry that they're at Mm. and their family still goes there and they just solidified themselves. But I think for me personally, because I was feeling so vanilla, I needed a circuit breaker mm. and moving churches was my circuit breaker. And is that why you felt you needed to find yourself against your family as well? Not, not You weren't trying to be rebellious. But no, yeah. no, because um, my mum's my best friend and mm. my dad and I are also really, really close and my sister's one of my best friends as well. Like we're a really close family unit um, and we're super tight. And then if you're at the church, and then they're like the a church, core family. Oh, it's this person's yes, story. Yeah. 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 So we were deal. super tight. Yeah. But at the church, I kind of we were kind of grouped together because we were super tight. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we weren't super tight, maybe we wouldn't have been grouped together. Um, but we were the Andersons yeah. and the Anderson girls. Mm. And that I loved at some points. And when as I got older, I wanted to be Katie. Yeah, it's fascinating, like you talked about being uh, the perfectionistic tendencies that you had and stuff, but then you're like, a, it was almost like, I've had enough of this. Mm. Like, yeah, and you took, and it's thing. Yeah, but it's almost like it, it was a, in conjunction with you leaning more into your own identity because you talked about like mm. dressing the way you wanted and yeah. stuff. And mm. then it was like, well, I actually need to define myself as Katie. Mm. Do you think, I've just been wondering, at what point does you, where in your faith does it make, we can ask you both you guys, where in your in your faith does it make you decide I need to define myself as the person that God has made me, not what the world is trying to define mm. me as? Do you want to go first, Gemma? Yeah. I think that's a huge question <laughs> um, because <laughs> I don't packed. think there's a clean cut no. answer. That's true. Um, I think it 
defining yourself is something that you can do once or you can do a million times over and over again. Mm. Um, you could wake up every day and define yourself mm. yeah, that's brand true. new Because we talked to like, oh, you need to, you're, you're 12, you just have to define yourself yeah. for the rest yeah. of your life. Or you but could I talk think with different people and be a different person. Yeah. yeah. And I think there are different, um, I guess, through your, your life cycle, you go through different checkpoints and it's like, okay, who am I going to be at this point? Who am I going to be at this point? Who am I going to be at this point? Mm. And I think it's important um, as a Christian and I would hope that as I continue to, go through the different checkpoints that I'm still going. I'm a um, child of God um, and that my identity is in Jesus. Yeah. Um, but I think it really depends on your circumstance. And I think mm. like for Katie, feeling a bit vanilla and feeling like you're associated to one thing that's maybe, you know, like Katie maybe felt like the faith was kind of just laid out for her because of who she was associated with. And for me, I kind of felt like because of my parents, I was like, okay, my parents are defining who I am and what my faith is like. Mm. And I think I needed to break away from that and have a moment of actually this is my thing. Mm. And I think that was the checkpoint where it was like, okay, hey, let's let's find Gemma's yeah. identity in Jesus, not Gemma Snowball and her family's identity in Jesus mm. um, and not based on the church that I go to or not based on the school that I go to. Um, I think putting your identity in Jesus – there's not really kind of a time where that would happen um, like necessarily, but it's like you kind of just got to wake up one day and go, hey, this is my thing and I want to live for Jesus and that's going to be my first point of call. It's like the things that God puts on you too. Yeah, like that's, fully. Yeah. And I think yeah. you can pray and ask God to do that on your heart too. I think um, in high school and even now, like I spend some time praying for God to just like, keep fixing my eyes mm. on him and I go hey god like I just want to keep my eyes fixed on you even though there's so much cloud and so much fog yeah. around me and the world and looking at everything that's going on in the world and feeling like is this still the right thing should I still be checking in and being like I'm a Christian my identity is in God um and I think just like asking God prayerfully to point you to him is a really good way mm. to kind of have that and to define that like kind of went on a bit of a Bit of a tangent, but yeah, we fine. got there. We got you, there. You did fine. What do you reckon, Katie? I think year 11 and 12 being a big moment of identity and change wasn't just because it was year 11 and 12 for me personally. I was at my lowest point, like one yeah, of my lowest points. That's an interesting um, I was battling with this mystery illness and I didn't know what it was. My mental health was pretty poor. Um, I... I had lots of change going on. I'm not great with change, but I actually have found out that I'm actually uh, pretty good with change. <laughs> it's just I thought I had all of these preconceptions in my head of the way I was and I'd put myself in a box because everyone else had. Also and with the perfection yeah, stuff would have helped. Yeah, right? yeah. So I put myself in a box and believed all these things that lo people have said had said to me. Mm. And I think when I was at my lowest point and I realised that I got through it because of God and he's never letting me go, I realised what I wanted to focus on. And it just so happened to have been in year 11 and 12 where a big mm. changes happen. Yeah. But I found out that I, I wasn't necessarily the person I had formed in this neat little box that I thought based on feedback I got. I discovered that um, I can pull myself out of the whole of the spiral um, through that situation that I can get through sickness and not being bedridden and not knowing why and not knowing the answers and that sometimes the label of chronic fatigue, which is the answer of I don't know, is good enough. Um, I discovered that friendship changes can be good and be lifelong and be sometimes the best for me as a person to actually finally be me and be accepted and to be a follower of Christ because you're part of an accepted group. Um, there was lots of things that I discovered through that time, lots of things I would change. Um, but Because uh, I was also like, I'd changed churches, was going into year 12, got really, really sick and had my first ever boyfriend, which is Ethan, um, and I didn't know what to do. And mm. I discovered that God can guide me through that. And um, 
Yeah, so I think I was at my lowest point and I think that's when God molds and shapes you. And I think at that lowest point, I was like, maybe who I am or who I'm trying to be isn't what God is has planned for me. Mm-hmm. And I need to be open to being molded and shaped into what my identity in Christ is. And just so happens that to help me do that, I needed the circuit breaker. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yeah, it's... Taking on for yourself your faith is a big decision Mm. and something that I took seriously. Mm. And I, yeah, it's it's not clean cut either, but I think I decided at that point that I was going to be myself 100% of the time with every single person I was with at all times. And that person was someone who loved Jesus and tried to um, love others to reflect that I loved Jesus and someone who is an imperfect perfectionist. (laughs) And um, yeah, I think coming and acknowledging that and accepting that was a big change in my faith journey. Mm. Um, Yeah. It, I was, I was thinking about something else, which is totally, but I think um, as well on what you're saying, like, I think part of growing up is, um, hitting all these points in life where you just kind of realise that stuff is really hectic and out of your control. And I feel like um, God kind of guides you through these moments where you're just like on your hands and knees, like, God, I can't, I can't do this on my own. I don't Mm. know how to do this. And I think that even happens after school and continues through life. And I feel like in school, I didn't have necessarily the same moment like that, but I feel like post-school, I have definitely had moments where I found mm. myself just like in that in that hole and it's like, hey God, like I really need your help to kind of pull me out of this or I need your help to give me the strength to combat this and to move forward. And I think um, that actually only grows your faith mm. more if, when you go through That's those what he's seasons. Doing, yeah, right? fully. Yeah. He's mm. fully like pruning he's you to be you. the mm. person that you are mm. supposed and when to be. You, and when you know that that is how you become who you are and the person that God wants you to be, I think that's welcomed, Mm. not necessarily wanted. Mm. (laughs) But if you know that through the fire, you will be shaped and moulded and remember that pottery isn't always perfect at first and it does need to be refined and God's our potter. Um, I think I love that imagery. It's beautiful imagery that's used in the Bible. Um, That, yeah, just knowing... If you have at the core the base, the foundation of what who you want to be, which is to love God and love others for me and do that and commit that to your life, the trials and everything that you travel through, if you have good good roots like a tree um, and the trees grow and they are pruned and they are shaped and they are cut down, but if you have that foundation, there's room for growth and always room to change and grow and I think if we can be apprehensive about it um, and change can be hard, but when you see it growing again, I think knowing that it will happen again makes it less scary Mm. and makes it better. I think sometimes when I start suffering now, like I've reached a point in my maturity and I'm not trying to brag here, but sometimes when I'm suffering, I welcome it because I know Mm. that God's going to refine me and I'm like, because I didn't used to be like that when I was younger, but knowing that I'm like God's teaching me something here, what mm. is what is coming out of this? I'm mm. like I know that I'm going to be more confident in Him, um, stronger to dealing with like other things, mm. more mature in my faith, like all those kind of things. So now it's kind of like yeah, I'd, and but then it scares me a little bit because I'm like, what's He going to throw at me next? <laughs> like uh, He's going to something put something really bad on my mm. plate. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, and it can be so hard because I think as humans we get caught up in our minds and like mental health is a huge thing today for so many people and, and women think, as well i feel yeah, like that we get more anxious about life yeah like guys i think do but they don't talk about it enough women, women just like talk, talk about, about it, it a lot <laughs> but maybe don't have the action behind it like yeah, the, yeah, yeah i think okay. i think there can be less drive to kind of moving Fix forward it. and i think um trying to navigate your brain and what it's Mm. telling you and what the world is telling you and things that you kind of fill your brain with and like combating that with what God says and kind of looking at him and fixing your eyes on him can be really hard 
thing to navigate. And I think those can be the seasons where your faith is tested the most, mm. most but you are growing the most and that yep. you are kind yep. of, um, you know, you're welcoming this suffering. Um, but it can be really hard to always go, hey, mm. Jesus, like you're in control. It can be yep. really easy to go, actually, no, screw you. Like I am, yeah. I'm really struggling. I want to throw myself a pity party and I want to make things harder. But I think I found... Um, when you do kind of welcome and when you do try and go, hey, God is still here, he hasn't actually left me, um, that makes that transition a lot easier yeah, that. through that um, journey of, I guess, suffering and just doing life. Yeah. yeah, I think with my family all being Christian, it was very easy to, in times of suffering, to rely too much on them to help get me through. Um, and I think when... I took that step and it's kind of like if we're using the plant analogy, taking away the support system that helped like the vines grow. The trellis. The trellis. Mm. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's like not a mass question. <laughs> if, you take oh, away, no. <laughs> if you take away the trellis um, after you've had that really foundational time to learn from, like my parents are my superheroes. They are amazing and their faith is phenomenal because they've both been through some really hard times. And I felt like I, when I was younger, I piggybacked myself off their faith mm. too much. Um, and so I don't think I would have been if I kept going the way I was going, be resilient, be strong, mm. um, be courageous, be able to adapt to change and making the decision to take the faith on for myself, I had to learn the hard way mm. that you can't, your faith is your faith. You can't piggyback off someone else's because you're never going to grow. Like you're not going to flourish. What does it take that defining moment for you would be um, like the next step in your maturity mm. in terms of your faith. Yeah. Mm. So I think that's really cool too. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, Adulthood probably was a significant time for us to do that. Um, but and you guys are both going to move on to your next season. Yeah. You're both going to get married soon too. Yeah. So yeah. It's, an, it's another step. New, new journey. Yep. <laughs> Which I think, yeah, like has already come with its big, yep. you know, struggles and like kind of facing this uncertainty and kind mm. of going, oh, how is this going to pan out yeah. and how are things going to work out? And I think like for you, like being – bit older than us not, not that much not that much <laughs> but like having your own children I feel like I do, you're yeah. kind of in this whole other mm. season where you've got to navigate all of these um like challenges I guess like how do you kind of go mm. about that in your life Are you asking me I'm asking you a question because yeah. I'm curious I'm curious how you well, kind that's of very lovely yeah. of you I think um I think as a as a man mm. as a man <laughs> I'm, um, a man. I'm a man <laughs> <laughs> oh, no one's full there. But, uh, I think um, the, the I think that, you know yeah people like to oh when do you become a man, and the thing that I like to uh, that I have learned is that you become a man when you take responsibility for your mm. life, and in terms of this is only from a male perspective, and I think that when you get married you take more responsibility, and then when you have children you have even more responsibility, and you have even less time. Yeah, <laughs> you have less time to be selfish on yourself, and you also have. Um, your responsibility goes way up. Mm -hmm. So they're the two things that I've, I'm really thankful of that those events that we've had in our life have um, really pushed us to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, and you're also in a, in a situation, obviously you're con constantly in a situation where you've never done it before, and especially yeah. when you have children. It's when you have children, you, you like you, you might be engaged to someone, you've been in a relationship for a while, you kind of know them to a degree. You move in and it changes for sure, but when you have children, you are completely, with, especially with your first child, you're completely flying blind mm. um, because you can read as many books as you want, you're still not prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you just have to learn on the fly. And, and I think, and I might not have even done this enough, but it, it, it's still... The responsibility thing really helped focus my faith a lot more, I think. Because mm. um, uh, I think of like one of the steps in my faith was like taking responsibility and asking my wife, Karen, to marry me. Like there was the, like, I was unsure about it, but every time I prayed about it, I felt less anxious about it. So I'm like, okay, this has got to be the right mm -hmm. decision. She's you know? a babe, so <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. She is actually. But um, the, yeah, with children as well, like, uh, like I would say that I'm in the strongest position my faith has ever been mm. because I've had 
time that has forced like less time has forced me to take responsibility and focus on what's really important mm. so now like i read my bible more than ever mm. and i pray more than ever and i get to do these things more than ever to talk to you yeah. about faith because it's uh, like that I, d- I don't know where i'm going with that but it's like no i get it they're, they are the things like god puts you through these seasons of life in order to you become yeah more mature in your faith in order to help him make disciples obviously mm. he's in control of it, but you're helping him make disciples but also just because you can you're sh- you're shining the light of jesus the more responsibility you take that he gives you mm. the when you respond to his trials exactly what you were saying yeah. before Gemma, instead of throwing yourself a pity party i really like that how you said like it almost was came out of personal experience mm. and i love that because you're like i'm not gonna i don't do this anymore because mm. i know he's tr- he's putting me through trials yeah. i know he's gonna make me grow in my faith mm. i know that at the end of this i will be more confident in my faith yeah. that's what i was really stoked about what you were saying so yes. that's just you you see more more and more different seasons of life and if you approach it as mm. like you're saying a child of god i think i think that's the, obviously the real key and and we keep coming back to identity identity is in jesus mm. continue to put your identity in jesus and focus on him and that's that's where it's all, not everything falls into place but your your priorities yeah yeah not just your priorities but also your um a, there's a peace within yeah. yourself yeah. that it's like everything can be hard for sure but there's a peace within yourself mm. that at no some way. point yeah. either it's going to end or he's teaching you something or he's making you more faithful or, or all those kind of stuff so yeah. Yeah. yeah i think it's really cool how you kind of said that like now you're like your busiest self but also your you've got so much time to kind of delve into god's word and spend mm. time with him and i think um yeah it's really cool how when god kind of throws these things at you and kind of mm. takes you through these next like steps of life or just the the course of life mm. how if you are faithful to him like he will give you the space yeah. to kind of um be a good disciple and kind of disciple yeah. to others like i feel like that's yeah. really cool i hadn't really thought about that and before. the responsibility thing as well like i think part of the reason why i kind of figured out who i was going to be as a child of god pretty early in life compared to some other people mm. was because i had I decided to take the responsibility of leading. And I think when you feel accountable to others, you want to be the best role model of Jesus you can be. And so I think leading from a young age was one of the best things I've ever done Mm. because I got to unlock this passion for children's ministry and youth ministry and help the next generation of kids be fostered and grow and... I think, yeah, the responsibility thing is something that really probably helped me make sure that I was walking the walk and talking the talk. So I I really resonate with the sense of responsibility kind of fostering and challenging your faith. Yeah, I think it's really important. And I think also I'm probably um, what we would describe in, you know, Christian terms, I'm a complementarian. I think as as a, if the man takes responsibility, it's really important to, mm-hmm. for the structure of the the family home and stuff like yeah. that. So, I think God's taught a lot of that stuff for me too. So, anyway, but guys, we we've been talking for over an hour. So I think <laughs> I think go. I think we should, yeah, yeah look we, at should, us go. we should bring it I in. You think we should wrap it up? <laughs> wrap, up the, wrap up the chips, as we like to say. Um, I just like to say that I've been super encouraged by both of you about your own personal journeys and just the way we've been talking about your faith in Jesus. So I think it's been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but to wrap it up, guys, if you've got any other questions, jump on the Discord because mm-hmm. Gemma and Katie are on that, so we they can answer Discord. any questions. Yeah. Oh, Discord's great. Oh, there you go. So um, <laughs> I was apprehensive. Li- Shock absorber. Yeah, that's right. The other, the other, <laughs> the other podcast you can look. We've also got our church gatherings on YouTube. You can look at our. Uh, Shock Absorber podcast, which is the other thing that we talk about how we do church and why we do church in a, an intergenerational approach. Um, but we're going to wrap it up, wrap up yeah. the chips. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having us, Joe. Thank Thanks you, for Gemma. Having us. Thank you, Katie. And we always like to finish with a one way. Oh,